Today we're going to talk about the most commonly asked questions we get about nitrogen rates. First of all, how much nitrogen does your corn actually need? Well, what we encourage you to do is download the free Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. You can choose your crop and your yield goal, and then it will tell you how much total nitrogen you need. Well, one of the big questions that we get, Brian, every year is, how about the soybean credit? I had soybeans out there last year. Am I going right. to get a lot of nitrogen for free? Well, you're going to get some nitrogen most likely, but the thing is there's no such thing as a soybean credit. It doesn't exist. It's a made-up thing. Here's where I'm going with this. Sometimes after soybeans, we have 100 pounds of nitrogen left. Other times when we plant soybeans and we go into corn, we have 10 pounds of nitrogen left. A lot of our tests from last fall showed 10 pounds left. Okay, so what's it going to be? Well, if you're just going to assume, oh, I raised 40 bushel beans, so I have 40 pounds, you're just guessing. Okay, we want you to soil test, then you actually know. So don't just assume because I raise soybeans, I have a whole bunch of nitrogen. Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. One of the big concepts we talk about very often is a soil's cation exchange capacity, or CEC. Can you explain that just a little bit? Yep, so cation exchange capacity is just the holding capacity of your soil. But what it also tells you is how much nitrogen your soil can hold. And this isn't an exact number or anything like that, but it'll get you close. Just take 10 times your CEC. So if your cation exchange capacity is 12, 12 times 10 is 120, we're going to tell you that at most your soil can hold 120 pounds of nitrogen at any one time. So if you already have 40 pounds out there, we would tell you don't put any more than 80 pounds out there right now. All right, and that's a really important number to know because we want to get the right amount of nitrogen. We don't want to lose it to leaching. And leaching is one of those concepts we get a lot of questions, especially well, on a wet spring like this. Well, there are three different forms of nitrogen loss. You've got volatility where you lay it out on the soil surface and then it can go up in the air. So we've got that concern. Leaching is when it goes down in the ground and then it ends up possibly in somebody's groundwater, so we have to worry about that. The third type of loss is one that a lot of people don't think about often, that's denitrification. But for example, for us, we have some really heavy soils that sometimes get saturated. Well, if you have a heavy soil that gets really saturated, you might not have leaching, but what you might have is you lose your nitrogen to denitrification. So these are the three types of loss. These are the three things you can protect from by using a nitrogen stabilizer if you pick the right one, because certain stabilizers will protect from one, but not from another form of loss. One of the most misunderstood things when building soil fertility recommendations with pretty much everybody I've talked to is organic matter mineralization. And people just aren't factoring that in, Brian, but it's a exactly. big deal. So a lot of people will say, oh, you have a soybean credit, which isn't true. But then the other side is, they say, well, that's all I'm figuring. I got a soybean credit, I got my yield goal, done. No, you've got one more factor in there, and that is organic matter mineralization. The more organic matter you have, the more free release of nitrogen you'll have. Usually in the United States, we figure 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen for every 1% of organic matter. So, in other words, if I had 5% organic matter, that's 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen that will come available all during the growing season. And it comes available based on heat. So, is any going to be available in April or May in our area? No. But is it going to be available, some of it in July? Yes. Some of it in August? Yes. Some in September? Yes, because that's when the heat comes. Finally, Brian, we need a little bit of a chemistry lesson here because there's a lot of questions on different forms of nitrogen. What's the difference between the ammonium that we're often talking about and nitrate? Yeah, so we should have talked about this a little bit earlier when we discussed leaching. The thing you gotta understand is your soil is negatively charged. Nitrate, when it's in that form, that is negatively charged. Negative and a negative repel, of course nitrate's gonna leach. On the other hand, ammonium is positively charged. A positive and a negative attract, so the ammonium is not leachable. That's the form that the plants prefer anyway, so we would like to keep nitrogen in the ammonium form longer. That's just another thing that most nitrogen stabilizers can do. Well, as you're building your nitrogen program for your corn crop this year, start off with the free Ag PhD fertilizer removal tool type in what your yield goal is for your farm. It'll give you an idea of where to start with how many pounds you're actually going to need. Then you'll build that out with your applied nitrogen, nitrogen that's carried over from last year's crop that'll show up on your soil test, and then also looking at soil organic matter and estimating your release. Well, the one thing we didn't really get into detail on is how much nitrogen are you gonna lose? Well, one of the ways you can lose some of your nitrogen is if you have a lot of weeds out in your field. So we'll talk about how to control this week's Weed of the Week coming up later in the show.